January the 10th, 2023, I'm Dana Durnford. Somewhere. I'm also known as the nuclear proctologist.org. Nuclear industry calls me the Gamma Goat. And you can call the Gamma Goat at Takes me a minute to get rocking and rolling. Okay, back to serious. Uh, uh. Oh, he's so sorry, sure is. How do you like your ass for human humanity? The A-10 Warthog only shoots dirty bombs. Make you feel all warm inside. Patriotic uranium spread all over impoverished brown people's countries. Let's get it on, baby. Evil mothers for nuclears. I like to take them down to Fukushima and put them one of them tungsten vests and see how patriotic uh, they actually are uh, I, know, I know you're gonna like you're gonna look at these you've never seen before and say I don't see an issue Dana what are you talking about well just give me a minute we'll get to that don't so push you we just started what the hell is wrong with you it takes me a minute you know to get up to speed Uh, Japan's current useful idiot in chief. If you listen as you say you do, stop being so secretive, Mr. Kushida. The, how long is he going to last before he takes off to a cushy job for a lobbying group somewhere, I wonder? Uh, this is an editorial from a major media in Japan saying Kushida would be quite mistaken. Ooh, so scary. If he thinks he will no longer be criticized. Wait, you mean somebody criticized him? Come on. Or questioned, really, about rash and radical policy shifts he's made last year without carefully weighing their consequences. This is absurdness and overdrive, by the way. Speaking of absurdness and overdrive, Cecilia Vega, she makes over $800,000 a year being a monster for ABC in the nuclear industry. She gets pretty, pretty clothes and f big shiny teeth to be a monster. Right? That's a pretty good deal, isn't it? I think it's a good deal. Let me show you what kind of a deal it actually is for her. All she got to do is stuff like this, where she pretends she's in a building that doesn't exist and that is an actual nuclear meltdown. And the results of a covered the planet in radioactive fallout in 20 days. And she's just got to cover it up. And so all your children get sick and die, as long as she, Cecilia Vega, gets a pretty shirt to wear and gets her face on TV and pretends she's somehow has the attributes of a human. 1,500 highly radioactive fuel rods <laughs> inside this pool. They've got to move them outside of a this pool. reactor into a safer location. Wait a sec. Whoa. So a lot of journalists done that. She gets under my skin because she's a press house correspondence press at the White House. And, uh, so that's the actual reactor. She in her picture is pretending she's above the fuel pool. There's two of them. I'm not sure which one it is. And the reactor core has to be underwater to change the fuel. Right? So everything is at the top of the building. 
There's a spot there for the crane, but it's the top of the building. So to pretend that she's looking down, way down, she's right up by the roof, looking way down at the fuel pool that actually doesn't even exist. These are the fuel pools. It's got around four decades of reactor cores. If that was your pristine building and someone sent you that picture and said, Cecilia is up at the fuel pool, don't worry about it. And you'd be like, wait, what? Wait, huh? What? Uh, no, you'd be like, that's a lie. And it's a murderous lie. This degenerate, despicable, hateful scum knew what she was doing. It's a monster. And they should be doing documentaries of how evil she was to fake Reactor 4. The ultimate in evilness. Of course, all the videographers, the sound engineers, the producers, and everybody else is just as guilty on top of that. The whole world media. But I mean, that's taking it to a different level. Yeah? Will you give me that? Will you give me that? That is kind of like, you know, whoa, lady, what do you get yourself mixed up with? They done the same thing for Reactor 3D Fake that too. The walls are cracked below the ground, let alone the damage above it. Now, the damage above it is, uh, hoo hoo. So they built this contraption around it with all the homeless they can scratch up and then pretended that she'd never even done it in Japan. She'd done it in America at a nuclear plant. There's 70 reactors in America, the exact same design, exactly. The same colors, the same. It's 100% the same, right? And so I, I think she should not be allowed to work at the White House. Is that a, you know, she should be arrested, obviously. She should be executed because she executed hundreds of millions of people with the deception, right? She makes Mao and Pol Pot look like a schoolyard bullies. She's a real life monster. With a, with a smile and uh, expensive jewelry, because she gets 800,000 a year to be a monster. The monster of Australia. Who is? Yes, yes, exactly. Who is Cecilia Vega? What the hell is Cecilia Vega? She's part of the ABC team in 2011 when Fukushima happened. And within a couple of years, the monster was loose upon us. Imagine doing that, right? And then getting on TV and doing that. <laughs> She married to a cop on top of that. The cop didn't even spot what kind of actual monster. He's probably bragging to his buddy. You wouldn't believe what kind of monster I married. <laughs> She's an actual demon. That's an actual demon. That's a Ted Bundy, right? Good looking Ted Bundy and good looking Cecilia Vega. What's the difference? Well, Ted only killed around 100. She's killed 100 million. Hey, guess what? They're going to go back to the moon, I tell you what. That's right. That's the big shot claim. I lost track. How many years is it? 50 years or something? Uh, Obama says, we already been there. <laughs> the world is full of scumbags, and they're all on TV and Hollywood and everything else. Astronaut left behind some 50 years ago. Yeah, it was 50 years. Where's your big square head to it? Ain't bring that in the shot. Thank you. Give everybody something to chuckle about. It is not the bone dry mass that scientists had thought it was at all. No. I text Kevin to see if I can call him for updates. I never got a reply. That's not good. Um, this is really interesting. The, wait, till, wait till we get through this article. This is from the Washington Post, which is uh, Jeff Bezos, right? Amazon.com. It is not the bone owns it and directs it. Panders, the, the journalist, the so-called journalist like Cecilia Vega will pander to 
Mr. Amazon, had thought it was, it's not bone dry, master scientists had thought it'd be for generations, including when Armstrong first stepped on the moon. So how come they didn't go back? How come China didn't go? How come Russia didn't go? <laughs> how come Russia haven't got bases all over the place? How come North Korea doesn't have bases? So one of the media didn't look. North Korea's going to put a base on the moon and get everybody and their pets. Rather, the moon is wet, abundant in water. is largely stored away different for, in the form of ice and forbidden craters. Forbidding. What do you mean forbidding? It's not forbidding. What are you talking about? You can't go there? Why can't you go there? Like, you got to watch media, man. Media doesn't waste words, right? If you played all of this backwards, it would probably be the devil is there. We can't go there. We're faking it. Who knows, right? Oh. We got Gar calling in for updates. Hi, Gar. Hang on. I'll get you up to the microphone. So Gar likes to take his... Um, Sophisticated uh, detection, radar detection voices, and scare all the boys and girls. How you doing? Good, thank you. How are you, sir? Uh, pretty good. Anyways, um, I got some oxygen testing equipment back. You know, I was I was trying to nail a company down with their with their certification gases on whether they was mixed or just taken out of the atmosphere. You know, so I could get a uh, the old school. You know, so I could get an accurate <laughs> analysis out of it, and uh, I've got other instruments I compare to. But it's good news uh, since I got it back. You know, I had new sensors and certified calibration and all that. I haven't seen it fluctuate off the twenty point nine percent in the time I'm running it again. I have in the past, though. So yeah, no, we got a lot of headlines of the less oxygen, right? And so it's about the calibration to get the real numbers, I'm sure. Uh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, well, originally, um, I've had these instruments certified, and, I, you know, I like to keep them on the money along with comparing them with others. And uh, I have gotten fluctuations in the past. That was actually a big concern. I was concerned about the plankton, you know, getting all uh, chewed up and dying away from that, from all the radiation pouring in the Pacific there. Well, we got the headlines so. on that, that they had bioaccumulated absurd amount, right? And that that's why the whales yeah. were showing up emaciated, because the plankton is missing, you know? And, you know, the other yeah. uh, species that are dependent upon that through the food chain. Yeah, no... Um, yeah, so like I've got thousands so, of headlines on it, so I'm just saying yeah, to people. This is right? something, yep. yep, this is something I'm going to be able to keep an eye on constantly, you know, in the future. Yeah. So I'll keep I'll keep you up to date on it. And uh, I was trying to get a hold of some other, you know, radio hosts there. The one guy he he always talks about collecting rainwater to drink. He was thinking it was great. And. Uh, <laughs> That's the worst. Yeah, you don't want a period. That, yeah. Yeah, that's the worst thing I've tested. You know. Yeah. Like Am Americium, cesium. <laughs> Absurd yeah. numbers. Yep. Americium and cesium. Like one, two, three thousand counts on your counts over the years. Oh, yeah. Right? Up to yeah. like, yeah, 14,000. Oh, yeah. A couple of years ago, the numbers were was just. The highest one I got. But it's always in the hundreds to thousands. I've, I've never. Yeah, because you're, you're not one. you're not checking for everything. You're just checking. Zero. If you find a couple in those numbers, you're going to find the others too. If you bother to look, right? And but oh, yeah. you, you don't calibrate for them. You only calibrate for cesium and americium. And am yeah, americium I, decays to plutonium right away. So. Yeah. Oops. I, I yeah. could. Yeah. I, I just I know. have to have yeah. the sources. That's right. To, you know. The, Isolated, but you don't, you don't, you don't really need to. You need to quantify a couple, right? Yeah, and because you can do a mathematical yeah. extrapolation once you once you got a single yeah, number yeah. nailed down, then you can make a ratio, mm -hmm. yeah, it, you know, with the two of them. That's right, yeah, in particular, those. 
because they're so prolific, right? They're emblematic isotopes of a catastrophic event in those scales that we're talking yeah. about. Yeah, yeah that, that, that explains me finding it in the food. <clears throat> You know, yeah, I still have nightmares about and, that. <laughs> yeah, seafood, supermarkets, and everything, and else. everything else. Yeah, not shocking the uh, numbers over the years from you. I'm, we're hugely appreciated of it. Just terrifying, though. Ultimately, right? Yeah, and uh, you know, like even with that, you know, I've got like the survey meter or glorified Geiger counter uh, that I compare it. You know, when when the Geiger counter shows up high. It, it shows up high in the uh, in the spectrometer, but I'm you know I'm guessing if you, you know some of your people in the audience have Geiger counters, just have yeah, them wipe some so. rain off. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Just have them wipe some rain off of their car hood, and then uh, that gets it flying out for for a while. Well, like if and you got if you got rain gutters, it's probably better. <laughs> I've got it out of rain. Yeah, yeah. I've got rain, it rain gutters are really good for thing. scaring the shit out of everybody. And it is, it's not oh, fair, yeah. man, and it's appropriate, folks. I'm just saying, right? Whenever I talk to Gar, Gar, because we got a history and the numbers that he's came out with over the years. So whenever, mm -hmm. whenever I talk to you, I'm just saying to the audience. Whenever I talk to you in particular, right? I talk the way I talk right now. <laughs> we're, okay. <laughs> Oh, you're going to scare it, the fucking shit out of me with this time. And, it, uh, it, the best thing to do is if you're talking straight to the person yeah. that has the equipment. Sure. Yeah, no. You know? Well, we ain't got anybody else, I, right? That's We did originally, for the I first couple of years, we had, scattered, we had scattered information coming out. But, um, you've been consistent and... Uh, you know, you're not you're, yeah. you're and, not going to hell with it, it and No. And and if it's somebody, you know, that doesn't own the equipment or they have a boss looking over their shoulder yep. uh, <laughs> they, they might yeah. they might be influenced on what the what they're but they don't have to answer is. for it, yeah. No, I hear but you. I have talked to people in the industry and yeah. I they, have they wanna know too and man. other people. Yeah. Yeah, I have talked to people in the industry, and they say, yep, it's there. I've covered, and I don't know what it is, a quarter million pieces of information over the last number of years. And so yeah, I, I, I have no illusions, right? And then I run a Geiger counter. I sent mine away and got it calibrated. I got the new parts, to $600, and blah, 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 blah. And I've done everything I can to try to... To get to the bottom yeah. of it, and then we run oh, this you're program. On the West Coast. I'm on the east now. Right. Yeah. Or, oh, you're on the east coast now. That's right. Yeah, we're doing research down oh. here. Uh, it's, okay. next, it's, now, an, it's really bad down here, man. On the Atlantic. Yeah. On the opposite end of Canada. Oh man, no spiders in the woods. <laughs> I'm, uh, you know, I'm in the Great, you it's know, crazy the Great stuff. Lakes there. You know, I'm I'm kind of in the middle, towards the middle of the country. Yeah, which is so, um, which is not good news for the middle of the country, obviously, right? Yep. Uh, yeah, no, it's terrible. Right. Go ahead, I'm sure. I'm sure. Okay. Oh, well, anyways, I'll let you go. I just wanted to give you a heads up with. Uh, yep. You know that you're looking at the oxygen finally. So. Yeah, good stuff. Looking forward to it, man. Okay. Yeah. Have a great one. Thank right, you, Gary. Okay. Now. Yep. Bye. Bye. All right. God bless. God bless. And so, whenever Gar calls in, he might be talking 3,000 americium 241 on the spectrometer, or and then another 3,000 plus for cesium-137. And then, of course, the 3,000, so he goes out and wipes his car or food or something like this, and he sticks it in the machine, and... When he finally gets his number, he rechecks everything, makes sure everything's calibrated. He has to, he's able to calibrate those particular isotopes. So americium-241 is going to decay to uh, plutonium-241. Americium-239 is going to decay within day, one day, three hours or something to plutonium, which is going to 
be there for 24,000, 240,000 years with 10 half lives, 24,000 years. And then the studies on americium um, and, well, plutonium, which is bizarre because it goes from americium to plutonium, tricky little nuke tart industry, right? That's why they call it the atomic plague. So we're talking about the moon. We're covering a story on the moon. We got a poll. First, we better acknowledge maybe. Dana, get your act together. Should ABC Cecilia Vega, who faked Fukushima Reactor 4, be removed from the White House Press Club? And the right answer, obviously, is yes. It's hard to believe somebody said no. I mean, I provided you all the information, for goodness sakes. What do you want? At least be honest. Whoever gave me a no. Yeah. Or fine you and take away your shoelaces on you. That'll teach you. Which is expected to take place in the next few years. They're going to send astronauts to the moon somewhere in the next couple of years. <laughs> NASA, man. NASA has uh, the credibility of a fruit fly. They're going to send people to the moon in the next few years, give or take a decade. They just sent this um, Artem spacecraft, and they had dummies in the seats. But So when you see some of the pictures, it looked like there was actually astronauts, if you weren't familiar. And you can be sure a few million, billion rather, weren't familiar. And thought men would have actually gone to the moon, right? Uh, no, 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 there's no, they had dummies. And so it almost looks like a leftover chunk of metal from the scre um, the green screen in 1970s. So that went around the moon, came back to Earth somewhere in the next couple of years. Now they're going to send up other rockets, but they can't send people up there right now. we got to cover the story because it's fruity, it's just fruity land. And we're talking about scumbag NASA, so this, let's get through it. That is why when NASA next sends astronaut to the moon's surface, which is expected to take place in the next few years, it looked... <laughs> Why does it take a couple of years? I'm confused as hell. And so they're going to put people down on the South Pole, away from where old Paulo is, so they can never stumble up on that site accidentally. In 2010, during a speech at the Kennedy Space Center, President Obama directed NASA away from its primary target, the moon. Uh, so now NASA can say, well, Obama you know, directed us away from it. To focus its human exploration missions beyond the lunar surface to asteroids and Mars. Asteroids, lots of asteroids are on the moon, by the way. And I just have to say pretty bluntly here, we've been there before. And there's a lot more space to explore and a lot more to learn when we do. Well, you don't know, like, what's the lesson that we learned from the moon, there is no lesson. The lesson is they never went back. The lesson is Russia never went there and captured it and planted a flag. Try wrapping your mind around that one. So 50 years later, they send a rocket up there that doesn't have people but dummies. And somewhere in the next few years, give or take a decade, we'll send some astronauts, maybe, who knows, we're not really sure. Obama said this, Obama said that. Obama's not in administration anymore. What are you quoting Obama for? Why does it take so long? Like, the, I'll end it on this. The computer power that they used to send men to the moon was equal to, not even, like your Apple watches are probably a thousand million times more powerful than the computers that directed the original. So it's like, it's hard to accept. 
And they say, well, you know, the dust is really bad on the moon. Yeah, but you got, um, surely the dust got to be bad on Mars. And then you got decades of playing around with that. You never ever bitched about it a single time. But all of a sudden, well, the moon dust is not like normal dust, Dana. It gets in everything. Oh, yeah, right away. But you're going to go up into a minus 280 temperature environment. That's okay. But some dust from the moon. And you're not going to go back to... You're going to go to the other one because you say there's water there. The, the, the whole story is humiliating because we're supposed to be humans and I don't see that in journalism. There is no journalism anymore. Football Town brought these kids, 20-year-olds, back two miles, two kilometers away from ongoing multiple nuclear meltdowns in, in the evacuation zone. <coughs> she was choked out that time. <laughs> I got choked out. <sighs> and the, may the mayor doesn't even live there. said, this is great. The, nobody lives there. And you can't, like, all you do is start breathing this in for a few moments. It sequesters your muscles, your organs, your bones, your body attacks it every second for the rest of your life with white blood cells. And there's around 1,800 illnesses that could show up, any of them or multiple ones, before cancer. And they're not just going to be doing this for a couple of minutes. They're going to be spending a few hours. Uh, like, so the, they're going to be... You know, even if they have a perfect environment, they bring them there in an enclosed vehicle with perfect filtration. They get out of their vehicle and get in these spots here, kick up the dust, and get a brutal dose in a matter of seconds. It's uh, pretty, pretty, pretty messed up. That's some pretty messed up stuff. Oh, talking about messed up. Japan's Fukushima becomes a major fruit production hub. How many thousands of headlines have we covered about this? They never stop growing food. This is reassuring for nuclear scientists. Uh, you can put your faith in nuclear scientists. Never again. These are maniacs as being polite. These are absolute un hideous monsters. So... Food was banned from for 55 countries for 10 years. 14 still banned food in 14 prefectures, not just Fukushima. Not Canada. Canada removed all restrictions after 93 days. Canada's like, fuck you. Eat radiation from Japan, get sick and die. Because he couldn't ship the radiation, radioactive food anywhere in Canada, and he did. And the health problem takes a decade or two to really kick in overdrive. Uh, heart attacks is typical of statistic of diabetes, Down syndrome, autism, Alzheimer's, dementia, heart problems, death by heart attacks, lung death by lung failure because your lungs are perforated by the plutonium and other isotopes. They get into your children's bones and start mutating their stem cells forever. And how many times do you got to do it to the newborn infant? Japan Japan has 14,200 children per 100,000 when they're born need open heart surgery to correct their congenital malformation. Otherwise, there's all kinds of terrible, hideous um, catastrophic side effects if they don't have it, it right it's just it's like different types of illnesses will manifest because of like holes in our hearts let me go back for a second so they're growing food in a nuclear wasteland and they're so crazy they're actually growing food right alongside a one ton bags of radiation in an evacuation zone And the whole plan is like, la, I don't, la, 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 I'm, I'm invisible. It won't hurt me. I'm, I'm, I'm special. I'm special. That's uh, 19 days later. They're uh, special, 
And so if you're breeding it, you're getting sick, and so is your children, particularly your children, particularly the female species of the planet, of all species, and not just humans, all species have to be um, vehemently protected to, to sustain life. And we're way down the rabbit hole at this stage, unfortunately. But we have to try. We're basically going to put our fingers in the dikes in Sweden. Or in Sweden, is it? It's, I can't remember, Dana. The brain has gone flat lined. Fukushima maintains safety measures. <laughs> <laughs> oh sure, yeah. Well, I kind of like this. There's a uh, ABC Cecilia Vega, monster of Australia. Now at the White House, right there. CNN Anna Karina, BBC Rinful. These are the, what called the 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 stabby in the back four. BBC Rupert Winfield Hayes. He double. He actually done it at Reactor Three too, and CBS set Dorn, which is a senator's son, pretending they're in fuel pools a hundred plus feet above the carnage to your left. It's a nuclear meltdown. The reactor was half full, and it had around ten million pounds of fuel in the pools. I'm not laughing. I'm trying not to scream. Hello, planet Earth. Fight back or die. Fukushima Town in Japan has recovered. <laughs> yeah, some hard cases, tell you what. We're going to have to leave that story because... Uh-oh. We're going to have to leave that story because... Um, it's personal, right? This extermination of everybody is personal with me. Fukushima Town in Japan has recovered. What did I, what was I going to look for? Why did I go this way, Dana? Okay, hang on. Brain. My brain is not working that good. We had snow today, so I had to get out. It wasn't as bad as they said it was going to be. It was close, but not as bad. It was fine snow and lots of wind. And so we got to, we, 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 uh, I got off easy, I think, anyway. So I have a, like a sweeper handheld snow thrower. It's really, really good. On pavement. I got a dirt driveway, unfortunately. But, um, took, uh, took the good out of me. Took me about three hours to recover. A vicious headache uh, when I finally woke back up. <laughs> Actually, Sat down and uh, crashed right away in the chair. Woke up a few hours later, had a brutal headache, and about three hours later, I was starting to come around. That's our first snow of the year. I'm a wimp, obviously. Let me play this clip for you. I think this is Al Jazeera. No, this is a Korean foreign correspondence. They're going to talk about how many bags they think is there. There's about 60 million tons. Let me do that again. A ton there's about 60 bag. million tons. One more time. There's about 60 million tons of contaminated soil that's being stored, planned to be stored, outside the Fukushima Daiichi perimeter fence. So and so they're dumping millions of one ton bags in Akuma and Futaba, which is two kilometers on north and south. Um, and growing food in it, which they plan to ship to market. And there's around 100,000 becquels per kilogram of just cesium. They're not checking for anything else, just cesium. That's the lie. they got to stick to it, right? Bunch of aliens. This includes continuous checking disclosure of radiation levels in cities. Like, this is total fabrication. There's one city that got 3,000 Geiger counters there. The place is surrounded by millions of one-ton bags, black bags, millions. And each bag is a um, 
hundred thousand plus per to five million per kilogram per kilogram. But on the Geiger counters you got all over the community it's showing just worldwide standard uh, nuclear weapons follow background levels, which is only measuring gamma, right? They're not showing you the plutonium or all the other isotopes. The data is being collected and published by the crazies. An official of Fukushima, an official. Every time you hear the word authority, official. That's the scariest words in history now. These, these people are like saying Cecilia Vega. You know, these are real life demons, right? The trans so when you've got not all your authorities and all your officials are actual monsters, useful idiots basically, but actual monsters, that's why they got the job. How do you break that cycle of monsterism? Of madness. The, this is a transition diagram of spartial, spartial. Like the, the numbers in Tokyo were 29 million becquels per kilogram or square meter. That's not spartial, that's evacuate, emergency. Like if that was America around a plant, there'd be 160 sirens screaming. Of course, they'll never use them. And sirens were put there because of Three Mile Island. There was, uh, there was around 100 reactors were canceled because of Three Mile Island, but it should have been canceled in 1959 because of Santa Susana which is equal to 463 mile islands. From April 2011 to September 2011, the radiation dropped sharply and currently is being kept at a very low level comparing the spatial radiation of the Fukushima prefecture to overseas, for example, Seoul, which had, this, um, had hot spots of a thousand times background all over the country. That doesn't turn the Pay fairy doesn't disappear, you know. Had 0 0.12 microsievert spatial rates. Again, the word spatial is, I've never seen him use that word, to tell you the truth. Fukushima is almost same levels to oversee. So, claiming that uh, that uh, an event that covered the entire planet with Absurd numbers. Canada had two studies of 220 million atoms per liter, 129 iodine, which doesn't go away for 15 million years, and there's uh, 10 half lives to it, which is so 150 million years. They're sneaky, aren't they? Half life means times 10. No, no, no double talk at all. That's what they're going to tell that to you. So, how can you have the whole planet in absurd numbers? But ground zero is perfect. Well, you can't. This is what's wrong. You can't have a future with nuclear on your planet. It doesn't play fair. It, it's got 80 years of digging a ditch and, and drowning itself and backing itself into a corner. And so now it's a vicious, hateful little monster that attacks everything that comes near it and consumes everything on the planet to survive. 90% of money for nuclear goes to administration. That's truly the batshittest industry imaginable. This is one of the monitoring... Is, well, the only, the only re result of something like that is going to be it has to consume everything and everybody to survive. Because if 90% of the money goes to paychecks, only 10% goes into the business, then... Um, like for cleanups, nine, if you do a billion dollars for a cleanup a Superfund site, which is nothing, by the way, for a Superfund site, that's like yawn stuff. Ah, there's only a billion? Come on, come on. Dig deeper. 900 million goes to pay wages, administration. Massive wages. So Kevin never got back to me. That's not good news. Uh, we measured a spatial radiation continuously at about 20,000 places. You, know, this is, you don't put up 20,000 Geiger counters because it's normal, okay? You put it up because 
it's mass hypnosis. You're trying to keep them there, and I guess the money isn't studying the, the people who lived there. Like they do with Hiroshima and Nagasaki, where they built cities back on nuclear bomb craters. The only spot on the entire planet. And I remember the first time I said that, and that was way back in the day, obviously, but I remember this comment showed up right away. Well, actually, the bombs exploded over the ground, which is way more effective. It was so effective that it blew thousands of people five and six hundred feet into the air. So they died from tr blunt force trauma when they landed with their horses and everything else. Pets, children. And they didn't even need to do it on top of that. The collected data is aggregated into a data server after checking the contents of the data, continuously publishes this information on the web's homepage. Uh-huh. <laughs> publishes propaganda on the homepage, does it? That's nice. To keep the safety of food in Fukushima. To keep the safety of food in Fukushima. What an interesting statement, really. Keep the... The genocide food in Fukushima, precise monitoring of radiation levels undertaken by the, like anything nuclear expert that came out of a university and works for a major corporation, these are not humans, okay? They have some, they look like a human. They have a degree which they claim makes them a human, but there's more to that to be a human. Right? So 20,000 places, they picked up 30 to 60 million one-ton bags, and they stored those bags at over 150,000 places. <coughs> <coughs> and it wasn't that long ago I covered the headline where they had over a half a million spots um, and over 12,000, uh, half a million spots they checked for radiation. And over 12,000 of them, the numbers didn't change all these years later, right? And so to suggest that 20,000 somehow encompasses, uh, well, first, for, like, I can take you down the rocky road if you want me to. You know, if you really want me to, I'll, I'll take you down the, the bizarre rocky road of the numbers in Japan. All right, well, you asked for it. Hang on. You won't do that again, I can tell you what. I can tell you what. Where do I put all my shit in my head, I wonder? Documenting a genocide. That's an old folder, man. Let me see, what are we gonna do here? Do we do America, Canada, do we do Japan? Radiation is forever. Radiation is not bigoted or prejudiced or racist or boys. Like the whole story is nut job, isn't it? Bear with me. We'll get there. We can do this together. I just need a bit of supporting documentation for the assertions I'm about to make this also. It's okay. We'll get there. See, the whole problem is when I click on the documentation I got, it's so evil, I, I don't, I'm afraid not to use it, right? Think about this statement here. Or this one first. Every organism in Fukushima Prefecture is contaminated with radiation. Every organism, look up the word organism sometime, is detected in worms' feces, 60 kilometers from the meltdown, 60 kilometers. Not, not 10 kilometers, not 20 kilometers, not 50, but 60. But what they say is the whole prefecture, every organism in the prefecture is contaminated. 
1.4 million becquels a kilogram for the excrements of earthworms. Who that's all they do is eat and poop, right? And there's um, all the worms are missing from the Pacific and Atlantic coastlines, by the way. There's over 470 species of worms. Tokyo neighbor cesium levels found in Fukushima. The Chiba, which is 20 kilometers from Tokyo, which is 250 plus kilometers away from the meltdowns, just the leftover from burning the waste in the communities at 70,000 becquels a kilogram. Now, they're just talking about cesium. Cesium. And which means you're going to put all the numbers into it. You're going to multiply it by 600, basically, to get the actual numbers. So if you can't, you can't get rid of the sewage, you can't get rid of the water from the reclamation, water filtration systems. Radiation was up 100 hours after the quake. Reactor 1, 2, and 3 started to boil in the fuel pools, which is game over, because 680 kilometers of coastline was torn off the coast. France says Japan lost control, the French should run. Government says 15, so 1,500 tons was part of the 50,000 tons of sediment from water reclamation, water filtration facilities. The sediment left over was normally used for fertilizers, very high, very rich fertilizer, right? And that was so radioactive, we wanted TEPCO to take it and dispose of it. And TEPCO, no, like, no, you found it, it's yours. I'm not kidding you, by the way. And nearly 50,000 tons of sludge at the water treatment facility was found to contain too much radioactivity to get that stored to get rid of it. So the sewage in many places had this same attribute, by the way. So like cesium at 334,000 becquels, it's just cesium, because you're, you're not talking about alphas and neutrons and betas and by proxy then the x-rays. And the only time with cesium and the gammas, there's so many other gammas, right? So th these are catastrophic numbers. Highly radioactive sewage. Now, it wasn't just 30 miles away. This was all the way up in Osaka, for goodness sakes. Debris from Fukushima plant is the radioactive debris from the plant. Ground up, not taken to a nuclear disposal site, but burned in other incinerators in other parts of the country. And it continues for years over a billion pounds of the radioactive debris. They're going to grind up and take it to the incinerators. And they had to shut a lot of incinerators down because people were having heart attacks at the incinerators. They found plutonium in every sample. It's everywhere. In Tokyo, the municipal location for garbage was 350 becquels a kilogram of iodine, 131, so there's going to be 10 times more 132, 30 times more 133, 31 times more iodine, 129. Is the government trying to contaminate every region of Japan by burning radioactive debris? And if everyone is contaminated in a relative sense, nobody is. No, everybody's sick and dying, everybody's, they got the atomic, that's called the atomic plague. Incinerating radioactive material now, which has now captured most of the planet in death, Radioactive materials can contaminate the environment. Really? Well, gee, must have been an Einstein figured that out. Incinerating dirty bombs could contaminate the environment. Well, golly gee, mister, I'm really shocked. You got any bubble gum? Fukushima plant will burn radioactive waste. They actually got a new incinerator there. That should make you feel all cuddly inside. The incinerator to run around the clock. Yeah. <laughs> Building materials. They actually burn 7,000 suits there each day because they're too radioactive to bring back in the building, see? That's the story, official story of TEPCO. And so they built this great big uh, sorting area for radiation. Who gets that job, I wonder? And ain't from a university, I can tell you that much. Iodine-131 levels rise 350 kilometers from Fukushima to sewage plant in 2012, just after the first anniversary, which meant the recriticality was taking place. 
which means an ongoing China syndrome, which is probably reactor one. Reactor core went into the earth by the looks of it. The fuel pool detonated, would have dispersed the fuel rods everywhere, and what didn't would have melted down through the building. Reactor two looks like the fuel in the pool and the reactor escaped the building, and that's why you have such emissions. Reactor three was obvious. It ejected the reactor core and the fuel pools directly into the environment. Each of these buildings are like 10 Chernobyls on a bad day. Horrific impact to the oceanic environment, an unpredictable amount of damage to the Pacific. Little did you know it was worse than that. Massive radioactive waste buildup in Tokyo suburbs. They were dumping it into the oceans and into the rivers and the streams and estuaries. Massive radioactive waste build up. Tokyo official blast a parents who wants to avoid their children ingesting radioactivity at school. It's important to share the pain, said the lunatic monster sadistic demon, who's probably friends with Cecilia Vega now that you think about it. Radioactivity 6.15 million beckles a square meter, 60 kilometers from the meltdown. We're almost through this painful. And back to the first two. When you got 1.4 million becquerels in the excrements of worms per kilogram, you got to scale that up by 64 to get a square meter. These are kind of, you're not growing food there, and, and if you are, you're going to cause irreversible harm to everybody that consumes it. <clears throat> Back to the f Japan as story. I apologize. It's the way it goes with Japan. They don't make it easy for us, do they? Fukushima maintains safety measures after the earthquake. Again, I showed you all of that to, so you can understand how evil everybody in the nuclear industry. There is no descending voices after the first couple of years. Everybody was captured. And everybody was now is uh, digitally censored. Look at my numbers, right? It's catastrophic uh, small numbers. For the most important, beyond, unfortunately, it is the most important subject in history, and that will probably never change. So it's important that we hold these people accountable. And what we do is that we run this educational program uh, with a few twists and turns into it. And we do research expeditions, which is just really what we're doing the show is so we can do the research, because that's what we're doing during each show, right? The inspection data is shared by the Japanese government, Fukushima Prefecture. There is no Japanese government the nuclear industry, and then there's nuclear industry in Fukushima Prefecture. If agricultural marine products have exceeded radiation levels, the Japanese government makes orders to restrict shipping. Well, like they artificially inflated the a thousand, well, five thousand percent originally from zero point one beckles a kilogram to five hundred beckles a kilogram, and then by two thousand and twelve they had an extra eight hundred and sixty-five thousand cancers compared to any other year in history spike. Not everybody got health care, and cancer is just one of eighteen hundred illnesses, diseases that'll manifest from the ingestion consumption inhalation of anthropogenic man-made death uh, isotopes. They're not created by the sun. They're not from the solar system. They're man-made. The inspection data is shared by the Japanese government with nobody. I mean, they had 5,000 speeding uh, radioactive fallout maps in the first month. They didn't share it with anybody, only the American military. Excessive. But there is no safe limit. A single atom in your body, 40, 50 years down the road, will, after your white blood cells attack it for 20, 30, 40, 50 years, will build a tumor around it. That can metastasize now and show up everywhere else if you're not diagnosed, right? So if it's close to the surface, you might find it because there's a lump, right? But if you don't get screened for it, and getting screened for it, you're going to get a brutal dose of radiation. They're going to try to treat you with the so-called radiation, excessive radiation levels. Again, everything is excessive. That's, that's why we have terrorist laws, for goodness sakes. 
There is no safe level. Your body, it attacks everything with replicating cells. Fukushima Prefecture promptly communicates to production organization distribution companies, a.k.a. public relations firms. So restricted products are not shipped and sold. Listen, you know, we got the documentation. And they're not checking. And neither is the countries that are receiving it. And that's why 55 countries banned it. 14 prefecture, not just the Fukushima prefecture. Fukushima prefecture will never be safe, ever. And the reactors are still melting down, so it's still massive emissions. The airborne radiation is still higher than the... Um, and so raising, like we've had polls here, should it be a crime to raise the level of radiation after a nuclear accident? And this is almost 100% each time for these types of polls because it should be a crime. It should be punished by the death penalty because that's what you're giving people, the death penalty. You're not giving a small number. You're making everybody sick. This consumes it. Nobody can escape it. And it destroys the quality of your life permanently, immediately, because it, it um, exchanges your red blood cells for white blood cells. And your white blood cells have to attack it for the rest of your life. Every second of every day. So if you get a cut on your finger, your white blood cells will attack it. And after four or five days, most of it's healed over. And so every white blood cell displaces a red blood cell. The red blood cells carries oxygen and nutrition. Do I got to tell you everything? It's okay. I don't mind. I'm just asking. Don't worry, don't. You didn't get it. I'll tell you 500 more times for this year. I've been pretty sure. The agricultural and forestry office confirms whether restricted products are sold or stopped. The agriculture and forestry office. <laughs> what about universities? What about academics? What about laboratories? What about scientists? You think I'm going to trust the farmer to check for radiation? Do you think the farmer wants to do that? They gave the farmers Geiger counters, never showed them how to use it. And so if you find over 500 beckles a kilogram, mix it with other rice and sell it, or whatever food it is. Now, the, the industry's gone genocide on you, and you need to, you need to gut up. you got to gut up. You're going to have to do it at some point. Why not do it now? That's the big whoop whoop. Earlier, importing food products from Fukushima was banned in 55 countries. Well, it's not that they wanted to ban Japanese food. They never had a choice. But uh, then they put people in positions of authority, removed restrictions from most of those countries. With a shake of a hand, no referendums allowed. And now it's 12. It's already clean. Citizens, not humans, not people, but citizens. That's a sneer, that's a slur, by the way. When they call you citizen, that's a slur. That's the same thing as a slave. An administration of Fukushima are making continuous efforts to bring the number down to zero. All I got to do is get rid of the radiation. We'll do it. So, say, a million years, two million years, check back in with us, we'll get right on it. Nationalized the Fukushima Daiichi Atomic Plant. <coughs> 2,500 almost accesses, 18 citations. Nationalized it. Well, it was nationalized. It went bankrupt right away. It was on the stock market. That's the protocol, right? So the scumbag investors don't lose their investment in the disease factories. So this is the 14th of December, 2011. Looking way, this is the crystal ball. You don't find it here, you'll never find it on your own, I'm pretty sure. Only by bringing a nuclear power station, this story in particular we're talking about, only by bringing a nuclear power station in the government hands, well, first off, TEPCO wasn't a decommissioned authority, they have no rights to be in charge of a nuclear meltdown. Only by bringing a nuclear power station in the government hands can scientists find out what really happened. Well, we'll just get some journalists to go in and pretend there's nothing wrong. That sounds like a better solution to me. Don't you think so? 
Look, uh, you don't you don't need to control the plant because this is the original pictures. Like I got to go to any engineer and say, what's the integrity of those buildings? <laughs> and the engineer would say, you got cameras hidden in my Canada camera or something. Only an idiot would think that there's any integrity there. By the way, did I mention that these are loaded with decades of reactor cores in two different fuel pools at the top of the, well, these buildings, those pillars you see there, those supports, you can actually turn an SUV, a large SUV around on them. Remember, this is a 150 feet wide building. So it was 190 uh, feet tall, 19 story building. Well, it was, like you say. It ejected the reactor core and the fuel pools. So I get a little offended when they claim that you need to nationalize it before you can figure out what really happened. Uh, you can just go to my playlist and you'll figure it out real quick. Events at the Fukushima, you know, if you want to learn about the tanks, just go back a couple of videos. Uh, that video don't um, get your brain in second gear. I don't know what's going to. I only work myself to death every single day. Events at the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant following 11th March 2011. Earthquake, tsunami <laughs> are of crucial importance for the future of atomic energy in Japan and globally. So, like, why would you put that into the story? Is that, is that person apologizing or something? To respond adequately to the accident, we have to know precisely what happened then and what is continuing to happen now. Oh, well, precisely. <laughs> Just get anybody with half fucking brain and they can explain it to you, okay? Now leave mommy's computer alone before her boyfriend finds it, kicks the shit out of you. To establish the facts, all the evidence and counter evidence for what might have been taken place must be gathered and made public. Absolutely. Here, here. Only then will the world be able to have faith in the containment plan. Like, first off, what are you talking about? Containment. So your word should be, look, we got two confirmed multiple reactor cores and fuel pools that have obviously caught fire, blew up and blew up and caught fire, not necessarily in that order. And so it shows you this very tiny picture, exactly how much damage to Fukushima. Daiichi nuclear plant sustained as a result of the 11 March earthquake. Now this is a year later, so there's no way they didn't know what I showed you. Particularly important is finding out whether the worst case scenario occurred. Jesus, I don't know, let me look at this again. Oh yeah, no, yeah, worst case scenario definitely occurred. But a self-sustaining nuclear reaction was ignited to core. Gee, I don't, I don't know. All the models of the plumes kind of suggest that we had a oh my happen. Like even Noah, which hit this for a couple of years before finally got released and confirmed. This is a 40-day model, but it's only based on venting, cesium and iodine in that model. I'll speed it up for you to 40 days. <gasps> 40 days. Now try holding your breath for the rest of your life. And so, a group of representatives from the diet called the B Team, which is ex government, was formed on 24th of March to develop a response plan, a cover up story. Set up by one of us, why now the former these were former prime ministers got together and couldn't determine what I just showed you. And so like I find that kind of stuff suspicious, that's all. I, I know, and I come on, Dan, be more trusting in people. Yeah, but it's a nuclear meltdown. I'm supposed to be a little skeptical. The team's recommendation to be released in the future report. <laughs> The future report will be independent from the crazies and the scum nuclear and fake industrial safety agencies. Oh, and 
TEFCO, which is not a decommissioned authority and should be removed immediately. In fact, we just had a poll. Should TEPCO be removed? And <laughs> in the, in the pink pieces of evidence remain incomplete. So this was a cover story. They were probably shaking down the government for bigger retirement pensions or something, right? I just am not going to go there. We conclude, uh, so this is important. We concluded that 38 chlorium was indeed present and at a level close to the initially reported 1.6 million becquerels per milliliter. There's 1,000 milliliters in a liter. So that's 1.6 billion. But they, they use milliliters. Look at that. Well, why why do that? Why not say 1.6 billion per liter? You know, to me, I just think that's the right. But so, like anybody who's got a understands millimeters, not the whole world doesn't, by the way. So you should use a more impressive number, right? And scale it up to a gallon. Don't mind me. Feel free. 1.6 million becquerels per milliliter of chlorine 38 would be indicative and of a nuclear meltdown and that was that was that was report close to the number that was reported iodine xenons and all the other numbers were reported too right and if i could find it surely they could have so these are whoa numbers you got to multiply that by all the other isotopes would have been the same sample well, you're talking a milliliter, 1.6 billion becquerels. So we're probably talking about fuel particulates, right, from the actual uh, fuel. And another one is xenon-135, which is made when uranium or plutonium undergoes a fission with a nine-hour half-life. And 135 detected in Unit 2. Now, Unit 2 is the least looking damaged. Well, they see, there's no way that those numbers wouldn't exist in these two buildings, right? Unit 2 kind of looks like it never had a meltdown compared to them. And we see that used constantly as a deception. People might look up Unit 2 and they'll say, well, that's not too bad. On the 1st of April, NISA questioned TEPCO's analysts and said the radioactive sodium 24 should also have been present in the sample. They didn't, uh, so what the story there was that TEPCO didn't report on the chlorine or the sodium. The sodium peroxide hydrogen buckyballs that showed up in California, like there's a couple of different studies of the same isotope from different institutions. One was uh, 360 atoms of sulfur peroxide hydrogen buckyballs a day was showing, these are very hot particles, in the testicles of males in California. And another study was around 1,500 atoms per cubic meter of air of just a... St now, this was from spraying the salt water on the reactors for the first 40 days or so. Uh, they, they knew this from the nuclear ocean testing years ago, decades ago, I should say. This is very bad numbers, folks. It's terrible information, and I apologize for being a bearer of this horrific. And so 135 xenon decays to 135 cesium, which has a 2 times 10 to the power of 6, which is a million, 2.3 mil million year half-life, I think. For the 135 cesium, which you never mentioned, right? You have 134 and 137. So, but you, you would expect the 135 because the decay, the decay of um, xenon 135 was 9.1 hour half life. So therefore, yeah, you might find the xenon 135, but you're, more, you're definitely going to find the 135 cesium, right? And we know that there was a lot of xenon, therefore, and because of the ratio, once you can extrapolate 
Like Chiba had 450,000 times more Xenon 133 um, compared to what they consider normal. They got 54 nuclear reactors, so there are releases from the fuel pools all the time that have been downplayed for so long. But 2.3 million year half-life when it decays after nine hours. So you would have found similar catastrophic numbers. Okay. On November the 1st, TEPCO detected Xenon in unit, and again Unit 2, which is the least harm-looking building, but actually went China syndrome down into the Earth. But because the concentration was low, and multiple nuclear reactor meltdowns, so because the concentrations were low, and you conclude the nuclei could have been produced by spontaneous fission of dormant fuel, so it was not necessarily caused by continuing nuclear reactions. And the evidence for recriticality is therefore inconclusive. Really, right? The iodine-131 was shown up in, even in 2014, which won't show up unless there's a, a catastrophic event, and Fukushima was a catastrophic event. So curium-142, at 3 kilometers from the reactors, and plutonium-238 at 45 kilometers away, and there are poisons if ingested, cause internal exposure, and cesium-242 has a short half-life of 163 days, curium, rather, curium, and 162 days, and plutonium-238, I think that's plutonium-238. It's 374,000 years. Let me check this. Yeah, 374,000 years. So, there's for plutonium, but look at the decay chain to get to plutonium. Right? And so, um, Plutonium-238 around the planet, well, it was everywhere. It was just, every, it was on all paved surfaces. It's through eastern Japan, say, right? There's 14 prefectures were banned because this was so prolific. And this is, so these decay chains, I'll get a, my square head out of the way there. These decay chains to get down, are to get down to plutonium. And then after plutonium, Here's the rest of the decay chains. So when you hear of an isotope with 10 half-lives, it starts decaying to different isotopes each time, in each half-life, which is 50% of it each time. So, but even theoretically, when, when it finally gets down to lead in a couple of billion years, it's still radioactive lead. They claim, though, but it's such a low emission that it's, it's not very harmful, it's still, it's enough to harm a cell, then it's harmful. Because the concentration of 238 plutonium around the plant were higher than usual. It was a billion per cubic meter of seawater off the coastline, 20 kilometers away. They suggest the broken spent fuel rods may be scattered around the site. Gee, I don't know how that could happen. Multiple nuclear meltdowns. It's equal to it's way more than 40 Chernobyls, right? Each reactor building had two fuel pools with decades and decades and decades of reactor cores and the fuel pools. You remember the fuel pools where all these people are pretending they're in the fuel pool way above it, looking down on top of it, of a building that doesn't even exist. A hydrogen explosion should not have generated enough heat to melt the steel. So the steel, the fact the steel was melted is evidence that there was a chain reaction also. It wasn't just a detonation that liberated. Well, look, you know, once you expose the fuel rods themselves, they got zirconium cladding around uranium plutonium pellets. They're already gone through a chain reaction. And then the biggest byproduct of the radiated fuel rods is going to be curium isotopes. 
And curium isotopes need lead shielding, by the way, 20 times thicker than you do for plutonium. Plutonium, let me explain to you how bad plutonium isotopes actually are. I forgot to do that. I apologize. I got a simple way of explaining it. It's not, it's not in a nice way, but it's a simple way. Works every time. Never let me down yet. Everybody gets it. Ah. Oh, um, let's throw that one out there. Why not? These were um, Raymond Gilmetty. He had 94 studies on beagle doggies and beagle puppies. And all of them died. Uh, by the way, look at this sentence here. Curium isotopes are the major byproduct in irradiated nuclear fuel. Huh. Gee, I wonder what that means. And comprise a significant fraction of the alpha emitting radionuclide inventories. Plate way saying you're screwed. So 144 beagle dogs and puppies. And they were given a single inhalation of plutonium, because beagle dogs got a big nose, right? They're very coveted in the nuclear industry to, for sacrifice means they they cut up kill them and and, and incinerate them, sniff the air to find the isotopes. So death from radiation pneumonia has occurred 1.5 to 4 years after exposure. Tumors of the lungs, the skeleton, the liver occurred beginning about 3 years after exposure. By the way, dog's kidneys are 50 times more effective at filtering the radiation than the human is. Bone tumors found in 93 dogs were the most common cause of death. Lung tumors in 46 dogs were the second most common cause of death. Oh, and liver tumors were found in 20 dogs, but were the cause of death in only two dogs occurred later than the tumors in the bones and the lung. Tumors in these two organs occurred often in the same animal, and were animal, you know, beagle dog and beagle puppies, and were competing causes of death. These findings in dogs suggest that the similar dose-related biological effects could be expected in humans accidentally exposed to 238 plutonium. Uh, again, let me remind you, a dog's kidneys is 50 times more effective at filtering the plutonium and excreting it than a human's is. Isn't that reassuring? that make you feel better? You're welcome. As an illustration of information about the actions being restricted, Oh, that's the understatement of the year. I've been doing this for a decade. How many people have got on our show? 30,000? No, we got 31, Dana. Oh, that's pretty good for me. <laughs> the truth is a curse, isn't it? Should ABC Cecilia Vega fake Fukushima Reactor 4 video be removed from the White House press? Well, I think that's a Jim Dandy idea. Timmy? Don't you? Uh, doesn't it make sense? Or to be born on... It would be safer to be born on Mars right now than it is to be born on Earth. Port Hope Area Initiative Project is the focus of special council meetings. Now, Port Hope, I'm not going to go way down the rabbit hole like I did last time. Maybe I will. Who knows? Let's see. Bear with me. Hmm. <laughs> Yeah, 31 odds. 31 out of 8 billion. Scary. I'm just checking to make sure my volume was up in case Kevin reaches out. I was looking forward to an update, but I understand, unfortunately. he's Kevin's on a Intensive care unit. He's got a got a pacemaker in his neck. 
And you got a defibrillator alongside him. He's not in good shape at all. They're going to split him right open. They have to go right in there, and they're going to have to re... They diagnosed him. They think they got it, and uh, if he survives, it's a very, very, very difficult recovery. And at his age, he's extremely lucky to get the surgery. It's just, we got our hopes that he's going to pull out of this, but uh, he's under a lot of stress for a lot of years. That ain't going to help. So we're trying to get updates, find out what the hell is going on. And nobody else is going to tell us, unless Kevin tells us, right? Port Hope Council will receive a high-level uh, overview of the Port Hope area. So Port Hope uh, refined uranium. And the tailing was used to build schools and uh, businesses and houses and sidewalks and malls and everything else. And so you can imagine how contaminated that community is. The whole community should be razzed to the ground, put on a nuclear holding site where nothing can escape into the environment. So they poisoned that place. They lied about it so many times. Decades later, a lot of greedy people in positions of authority never changed. And so there's, there's no future to live in a city like that. It's like living within 100 miles of a nuclear plant. First, like if you can see, if you can hear the sirens within ten miles of a nuclear plant, you're you're li you're getting radiated like you can't imagine, and I can call it, quantify that assertion by the facts that we cover all the time the sex ratio studies around nuclear power plants, but the the scary part about it uh, is that the sex studies around low power nuclear power plants, low low megawatts like universities and that research reactors showed the same results and these were the sex ratio so to do the study what they were doing is they're studying everybody in a circumference of a nuclear facility and they're seeing more males than females and what that means according to them is that everybody got poisoned by the radiation and that's how they can they can find out is by doing a sex ratio study. And so this is true for all species, by the way. It just doesn't just affect humans. And so we even have studies that suggest atmospheric testing changed the sex ratio of all of males, to more males than females worldwide. It's just less population of all species, right? And if you keep like, just the original nuclear testing eventually would wipe out all the species and humans. But, uh, no, that wasn't good enough for them. They needed an accelerant. It's global warming, right? Because you're hemorrhaging radiation. The radiation never goes away. It pulses energy every second. I almost had 186,000 miles per second. 300,000 kilometers per second. Pulsing energy every second. So it wrecks all your chromosomes, your DNA, your stem cells and everything else. It does that every second. But as you're consuming it and drinking it and breathing it and everything else, you're, you're accumulating it in your body, what's called bioaccumulating. And so every one of them, if you've got thousands or millions in your body, your body has to attack every one of them like they're cut. But the but cut never heals. And so the more white blood cells you produce, the less red blood cells you have. Less red blood cells you have means you're which carries the nutrition and oxygen, which now means your immune system is compromised. And this is true for all species, by the way. Not only that, once you get up to a certain stage, now your thyroid gland is also saturated, you're producing radioactive hormones. And now you're in real, real trouble. And so now your body can't defend against pathogens and viruses diseases and stuff like this that were normally harmless and benign and innocuous could never harm you, all of a sudden now are lethal. So if you throw in a couple of weird flus, accidentally released from some bioweapons lab, you can imagine where that ends up. Your immune system is compromised. You start piling on a few pathogens that that takes advantage of people with those and animals and mammals and everything else with those compromised immune systems and you have a slow kill. 
the Atomic Energy of Canada Limited. Their whole legacy, of course, is hideous. It's a blight on the history of humanity. Let's go on from there. Southern Utah is featured in Downwind documentary premiering at Sham Dance Film Festival. The map just shown. Each line on that map was two atomic bomb tests with the wind in the same direction. Okay. Well, this one here is uh, in the bottom right-hand corner is Fukushima after 19 days. So what's worse, a nuclear meltdown or a nuclear war, a.k.a. nuclear testing? Nuclear testing and nuclear war is the same thing, right? So this is really interesting. I don't know if it'll work out for humanity or not. This is really interesting. What, we, what I'm going to tell you here, hopefully, anytime you're ready, Dana. Preventing future radioactive testing, a.k.a. nuclear meltdowns, nuclear fuel pools. The nuclear fuel pools are hemorrhaging into the environment. So if I gave you a... Um, 120,000 liters, one liter each, 120,000 of them, jugs of apple juice. What You're going to say, what the hell am I going to do with 120,000 jugs of apple juice? Dana, it's transport truck loads of apple juice. What do you want me to do with that, for God's sakes? Okay, so that's what comes out of each fuel pool worldwide each day, and there's a 1,000 fuel pools. So each day, there's a 1,000 fuel pools. Each fuel pool is hemorrhaging minimum about around 120,000 liters is boiled off into the environment from the fuel rods. Each liter uh, has soaked up trillions of isotopes from the fuel rods because they're splitting the fu uh, atoms. And that's evaporated into your environment. Now, almost all nuclear power plants except for a very tiny fraction of them, but the majority, the very, very vast majority of nuclear power plants are surrounded by farms. So going to your supermarket is a deadly game. And that's been going on for 80 years. And so they're very, you've got 80 years of being evil little monsters, generation after generation getting away with it, and then the current generation is what I call the entitled lot, where their parents were scumbags and their great grandparents were nuclear scumbags and et cetera, et cetera, right? And they're the coasters. They they got the job because of who their family were, right? Uh, most of them are Harvard, Yale, Stanford, Oxford, MIT educations, paid for by the nuclear industry. On top of that, to carry out carry on the tradition of deceit and dishonesty and deception which is what the legacy of the industry is predicated upon. At the time, the federal government reassured residents uh, in Las Vegas the bomb test posed no health effects. And so they set off over 900 nuclear detonations. They say 100 of them were in the atmosphere. Well, back that trolley up. All the nuclear tests underground cracked open the ground. Everything was vented. It was vented at the speed of light on top of that. We got a pole. Everybody got a pole. We got a pole. Where's the pole to? Should ABC Cecilia Vega, who faked Fukushima Reactor 4 video, be removed from the White House press? She should be arrested, charged with crimes against humanity. But well, we'll be happy just to get her out of the White House press because she deserves to be removed from that job. She doesn't deserve to be um, on TV influencing humans after the crimes against humanity that she's created. She's truly one of the most sadistic people imaginable to pretend to be in a building that doesn't even exist in order to make you complacent so you don't defend yourself against the radiation. We could have come up with solutions, see, eh? if it wasn't for the Cecilia Vega's assassinating all of our species and humanity's future. Because that's what she done. She assassinated all the males, females, particularly the children. 
So they're talking about a 100 atmospheric test at a 900 test, but everything's cracked, the earth open and is vented at absurd speeds. Uh, he said research on the film showed St. George had above average rates of radioactivity compared with nationwide average. Well, like, there were seven states in that group around Las Vegas. Well, they used to wait for the wind to blow towards Las Vegas and other vulnerable communities, right, when they were doing these nuclear testing. You know, they done their nuclear testing in the Bikini Islands because they didn't have a voice or a way to stop the people who lived there, right? Now, currently, there's a million square kilometers is in 2019 study, a million square kilometers is too radioactive to inhabit. A million. Of the nursery of the Pacific Ocean, by the way. Uh, the British done the same thing to Christmas Island. The French done the same thing to the French Polynesian Islands. The, the British also went to Australia and waited for the wind to blow across the country before they set off their nuclear weapons. They also done over 700 dirty bombs where they wrapped um, radioactive hot particles like uranium, plutonium, uranium-235, plutonium uh, in conventional explosives and detonated it. And we got the testimony from a lot of people in the military that participated in that. And then when Australia left there a few decades later, Australia said, you know, by the way, you just poison our whole country. The United Kingdom gave them $90 million and said, you're not getting a penny more. 90 lousy million to poison your entire continent. On purpose, too, right? In fact, um, Montebello Islands in Australia, you still can't go. You're not allowed to go there for more than one hour. <laughs> in other words, you're not supposed to go there. But anyway, they're doing this movie, Black Lot and Docks, Hiroshima, Nagasaki, Mercury, Nevada, and they're going to shed some light on some of these crimes against humanity. And they got some great big players, some movie stars, and uh, very high, very high profile people. Michael Douglas, Lewis Black, just to name a few. So superstars to shed light on what happened. And who cares, you know, I, I'm not, I don't care who gets this into the public sphere, as long as somebody does. That's why I run an educational program. Actually, I run an educational program on nuclear because I want to create a million little bastards just like me that are really articulate and can't be fucked over so that they eventually destroy the industry anyway. I think we already done a pretty good job. I think the industry has definitely got a fatal dose of reality. Uh, Germany minister, environmental minister, confirmed phase out of disgusting, dirty nuclear power in mid-April in Germany. Nuclear power is no longer necessary for the security of supply in Germany. <coughs> <coughs> no, the only reason they gave it a three-month extension before they turned off the last of their reactors was because they got bullied by the media worldwide. They were supposed to be shut off in January the 1st. That was supposed to be the last day for the last three reactors in Germany. They, shut every, they got them all shut off over 11 years. Only three left. Andrew Merkel has been character assassinated for uh, 10 years since she made the announcement. But that was just part of the Germany party anyway in previous years. And Fukushima was a shot of reality for humanity, we thought. Instead, the gobblish industry has taken over. The problem with nuclear energy advocates... Well, they're, they're lunatics. They're perpetual lawyers. They have no factual information. They regurgitate the same narrative for 80 years. 
Don't matter who they are, what suit or institution they came from, it's the exact same narrative. It's like a banana, like a potato chip, like walking in the sunshine, like climbing a mountain, sleeping next to somebody, like peanut butter and 15 minutes in a river and a kayak. All of these are lies. I'm just saying the same lie generation after generation, universities pumping them out to regurgitate that narrative. You'll find it everywhere throughout the entire, no matter where you go. Hollywood, cartoons, you name it. You're going to find it everywhere. It's a real, real, real... It's taken over our planet, like UN, which uh, proliferates it. You know, the United Nations has UNSCLEAR, and they got IRPA, they got the ICPP, they got IAEA, and who knows how many organizations that promote nuclear. They coordinate all nuclear worldwide. Think about that. There's one organization, this corporation, Eisenhower called uh, the military industrial complex. George Bush Sr. called the New World Order multiple times in many statements. New World Order. There's a big problem with nuclear energy and advocates. They're not advocates, they're monsters, like Cecilia Vega. They're lunatics, they're perpetual lawyers, they're sadistic demons. There's Raphael Grossi, you're going to try to tell me that's not a sadistic demon? Come on. Uh, the reprocessing plant in Japan is uh, delayed again. Well, it's 28 years behind schedule. I can't say I'm shocked. And so now it's not going to be open 2022. Of course not, because it's 2023, moron. Oh, it's World's Nuclear News, Dana. Ah, oh, that's right. That's moron, the capital moron of the planet Earth. It's 28 years behind. They've already got like $140 billion to make mixed oxide fuel. And you still can't get it to work, thank goodness. Is $140 billion? It's 28 years behind schedule. Those Japanese boy, they're so good. They're so technical, I'll tell you what. They're so smart, M-A-R-T, smart. 2.2 million euros or sterlings? I can't remember. That's uh, sterlings. Which could be used uh, to investigate Solar cells, which could be used in space. First off, like the astronauts, instead of going up again, they're going to, uh, a couple of years, give or take a decade. Whenever I see stuff like this in space, like the last thing we need to work on is space. We've got to work on Fukushima. We've got to work on Hanford. We've got to work on Santa Susana and the Mayak. We've got to work on wind scale. We got we got a uh, hundred and sixty subs nuclear subs washed up, rammed up on a beach, in uh, Manscap or whatever it is, northern Russia for God's sakes. The list goes on. You dumped it in the ocean for three decades. We got to deal with that. Some generations are gonna have to deal with it, right? And we're the ones to our watch. Oh, it's not. The industry has uh, displaced all descending voices. This descent in the nuclear industry is considered a crime against the nuclear industry. They're, they're not evil, they're stupid. There's a difference, right? 2.2 million grant to investigate new solar cell material which could be used in space. Again, believe nothing the nuclear industry tells you. Texas Radiation Advisory Board. Excuse me if I'm a little skeptical. Um, January the 18th, you can do a verbal or be there in person, folks, if you're so inclined. If not, Rod Adams will go in there and tell lies. A bomb cyclone storm causes a tense moment at Davy Bessey nuclear reactor. So a storm, these bomb, these so-called storm Jericho's bomb cyclones that materialize at a thin air, 
Kakazu Meltdown. You get it? How vulnerable your children and your souls and everybody else's future actually is? Do you get it? 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 First Energy, who bribed, I can't remember the number, 60 million or something in just one transaction to buy off uh, senators and congress and, uh, people gets a $4 million fine, which is irrelevant. $4 million, this company makes around $12 billion a year. You really think $4 million is not even a slap on the risk. It's, not, it's, a, it's a slap on your wrist, but it's not a slap on theirs. NATO involvement in Ukraine must not... Like, first off, NATO was created because of the Soviet Union. When they were dissolved, NATO should have been drowned in buckets of vomit. NATO's like one of the worst things could happen to a planet. You got 28 militaries. If you go to the website, they don't say 28 countries, they say 28 militaries. 28 mass murdering rapist machines, 28 genocide machines that are, are delaying the war by giving Ukraine, that's a covert war with Russia, right? That might never end sick. And who the fuck is NATO to start a war on the planet? It's like a country that don't exist that starts a war. Oh, we got to go to war because NATO said so. You know, like, look in the mirror and, and realize how stupid that actually sounds. For it, there should be no organization on the planet with those types of attributes. Okay, all right. And I'm not really impressed with it. So stop it. Don't make me tell you again. Lithuania's nuclear plant to be dismantled by the U.S. engineers. They're terrified of radiation. Once they woke up after Fukushima. They blessed their hearts. They got in gear, didn't they? They're try At least they're trying. Once Fukushima happened, they got it. Oh, and look at us. The plant is surrounded by farms, Dana. No, nah, they would. Nobody, nobody's that evil. Nobody would do that. <clears throat> Guess what? They did it. Russia's taking the Ukraine nuclear plant to hit to the clean energy future. This is Chris Singh. Dr. Evil himself, Chris Singh. He wants to make a mixed oxide fuel, folks. He's gone from being a waste disposal to being a uh, humanity disposal machine. Way to go, Chris Singh. You sack of shit. He's also the janitor, too, right? Not just the owner and president. He's the janitor, so. He's a working man. What can you say? Copenhagen's Atomics puts forward small modular reactor designed for UK appraisal. Hey, psst, you interested in a little small modular reactor? We can help you out. It's, uh, world, it's world nuclear news. So it's from a lot of pro-nuclear Major degenerate pro nuclear lobbying group is World Nuclear News. Almost as degenerate as the World Nuclear Association, but actually nowhere close. The World Nuclear Association are the real goblins, aren't they? They're something, man. They don't even know what, how to spell the word human. They hate us that much. Pandora's Box of Nuclear Progress. Pandora's Box. And uh, there's a movie coming out from CNN in a while back, Pandora's Promise or something, pro-nuclear, with all the, like, Michael Schellenberg and all the other scum into it. Not good at all. That's a... Uh, like, it's hard to put it in context how much pollution they put on the planet. But just a single place, Hanford, just a single time in the 50s, had dumped uh, 450 billion gallons of radiation into the soil. That sounds like a lot, but does it sound like a lot to you? Do you realize how much it actually is? It's the equivalent of taking a 
glass aquarium six feet wide. That would be a pretty big aquarium six feet wide, right? And then going up 520 feet and going around the entire planet. That's how much they dumped in the soil in one go. And there was many, many, many one goes, folks. They got 41 miles of online trenches where they dumped the nuclear sludge into the ground. 41 miles. It's, on, it's illegal, by the way, to have online trenches at uh, local dumps in Hanford, but nuclear doesn't play by any rules, do they? Well, their rule is how do we kill everything permanently? If I do my part, there's no nobody, nothing left for the future. Look at me now, ma. I'm a nuclear degenerate scumbag. Uh, so this story is pretty good. What he tried to point out a whole f bunch of evilness in the nuclear industry. Got to give him kudos for that. Canada, Canada is the world's largest single supplier of uranium. Yeah, the, the nuclear industry in Canada is on a whole different level of evil, man. Japan is getting there, but the Canadian nuclear industry is despicable. They removed all restrictions and all the food from Fukushima Prefecture within 93 days. Like, yeah, yeah, I love them. remove it. Japan's like, we can't ship the food anywhere. All the countries worldwide got us blocked. And Canada's like, yeah, so, hey, hang on, we'll remove that. Who we got in there? Stephen Harper? Yeah, just give me a couple of minutes, I'll get back to you. 93 days later, they removed the restrictions. All that radioactive food that nobody would touch, including Japan, they shipped it to Canada and stocked your uh, supermarkets, your major supermarket shelves with it. Like, if, if you don't understand how evil that is, you're so lucky. You have no idea how lucky you are. Belgium agrees with uh, injury to extend the life of two nuclear disease factories by 10 years. The whole problem is, is that renewable is here, baby. And geothermal is getting a grip on people's consciences, it seems to me, in the last couple of months. So geothermal, they expect by 2050, um, between now and 2050, to be... What was the number? $50 billion just for um, the drilling bits. $50 billion just for drilling bits. Market because geothermal is going to explode. Cryogenic energy storage for nuclear power plants. <laughs> nuclear is not evil at all, Dana. Not our entire history is evil. But you, you can use it for wind and solar. The best thing to use is geothermal. You don't need no storage, right? <coughs> you need more power, you just build another geothermal plant right alongside of it. And you can put the school playgrounds and parks right alongside of it. The emissions is just water vapor. Anyway, uh, that's another one for energy storage. With me. There's a bunch of these studies, and somebody left a comment about it, and I was like, oh, yeah, I'll go check that out, and that's it there on yesterday's video. And I just want to make sure I put that in my list here so I don't lose track of it. Come on. I got it. Just bear with me. Canada lifts restrictions on Japanese food imports, Jan June 14, 2011. That has to be a, some kind of a record on evil, doesn't it? Like it's pretty hard to beat that for evilness. And Lord knows they're trying, but... What do we got going on over here? Give me a second. Because there's a whole lot of ways to store energy. You can store it under water. I gotta do another video on that at some point.
Here, let me put it right there. Uh -huh. So there's, uh, the world's crazy. There we go, I'm finished. My apologies, everybody. Uh, so there's different types of storage. And so cryogenic energy storage is a whole lot of different. You have to look it up on your own. I'm not going to go through. Liquid air energy storage is similar. Compressed air energy storage. These are simple technologies, by the way. Heat engine based storage systems. Compressed air energy storage uses wind turbines to drive air compressors. It's a brilliant idea. Nuclear energy, who better to ask in Japan? This is Australia. Man, like, the, the pro-nuclear in Australia, which is firmly entrenched and embedded with the media, are vicious. They're vicious. Every single headline we get from Australia is douchebaggery. Every single headline. It, it's, it's really like they're not even humans. They're, they like... For rapid responses to power shortage, the air is channeled to a conventional gas turbine at a capacity of 291 milliwatts. The time about storage. Smaller, even mobile air, compressed air batteries are currently in deployment as well. No, I am lost it. I'm on the... That's what I wanted. My apologies. Australia's notoriously reluctant to embrace degenerate nuclear energy. Bless your hearts. But it's a discussion the nation needs to have if it's to achieve the emission reduction targets. So they're using reduction targets, so-called global warming is caused by radiation for 80 years. It's bioaccumulated. You never get, it never goes away, right? So imagine pissing on your bed every night when you went to bed. How long before you can't lie down in your bed again? And then it shows a picture of Reactor 2 in the background. <laughs> when you talk about Fukushima. At the top, at the top of the page. Well, you don't expect them to show you that, right? That's reactor three. I didn't show you reactor two. It looks pretty, see? Reactor three doesn't, though, does it? High probability successive occurrence of Nikai mega thrust earthquakes. And it's every 20 to 30 years or something. I get that broken up into two parts. A 30 year occurrence probability. And they got nuclear reactors, nuclear fuel pools all over the site, all over the country. And, and they're building a mixed oxide fuel facility. Thank goodness they can't get the kinks out of it. And so, Mrs. Harris goes to Paris, producer, Super B Films, nabs the rights to books, series, Unveiling Slate. So, Unveiling a new project, Super B is planning several prestigious uh, drama series for TV and Netflix, I guess, and everywhere else, including Fukushima, about a team of scientists who risked their life to contain a nuclear disaster. Yeah, it totally looks contained to me. I can't tell the difference. Eight hundred thousand a year. She even looks like a human, don't she? Well, she doesn't to me. But to the average person, she looks like a human. See. But the evidence of what she done, and I posted the eleven second clip. In, so in my video sections, you can download that and, and upload it somewhere yourself. Let's play the clip 
of her pretending she's in a building that don't even exist. Anytime you're ready. 1,500 highly radioactive fuel rods inside this pool. They've got to move them outside of this reactor into a safer location. Uh-huh, yeah. No, go on, boy, you're kidding. She's pretending she's way above, way above the pool, which would be 100 feet above where my finger is pointing. But as you can see, this building, there's nothing left of it. It was 100. Now, they're, they're, these are both the official pictures. Helen Calicott says that they're very tidy people, so it does look like that. But it doesn't. And that piece of shit should keep her mouth shut. Excuse me. Apologize. You can count on a journalist to tell you the truth, Dana. Yeah, I can honestly say I'll never trust a journalist again, or a professor, or a scientist, or an academic of any discipline. If they went to university, it's going to be hard to... There's good people out there, not... It's just going to be hard for me to trust them, right? It's hard to imagine uh, the reality of the reality. So we got a poll. Everybody got a poll. I got a poll. Here's my poll. Should ABC Cecilia Vega, who faked Fukushima Reactor 4 video, be removed from the White House? And I showed you the video of her faking it. So it's not like you got to figure it out on your own. I also took the liberty of posting an 11-second clip a few hours ago. So you can enjoy it and share it with everybody yourself or download it. And uh, a long day today. It's a tough day. It's the toughest day I had in a while today. And uh, it's hard for my elbow to heal when I'm out there. Getting busted up. Uh, read everybody's comments after we call it a night. Good night, everybody. Hope everybody had a good day today. Hope you have a good day tomorrow. We'll see everybody. Um, tomorrow's Wednesday? Yeah, tomorrow's hump day. Well, no, today's hump day. Yeah, Dana and Sana. Good night, Dana. Thank you for moderating. I hope everything went well. I've been pretty lucky this last year. Pretty cool, straightforward gig for the most part, not always. Don't forget to give us a thumb up if you made it this far. We'll see everybody. Oh, we'll see everybody. Uh, thanks for everybody. Have a great night, a great day tomorrow. Don't take no Fukushima rice into your body, please. Or anything else from Japan. See everybody tomorrow night. We've got a great show for tomorrow night. Everything goes good. We'll see everybody then. Don't forget to give me a thumbs up if you made it this far. Thanks for participating in the poll.